Hello again, viewers. There has been some time that has passed between when I last saw you and now. Why don't you come over and I'll show you what I'm talking about a little bit here. Uh, as we talked about earlier, the studs in this front cylinder exhaust port had both broken off down inside and that was uh, uh, the issue with the exhaust leak there. Now, the other day I started drilling out the lower hole here, but in the process inadvertently drilled into the coolant passage, which, well, for lack of a better word, that sucked. Uh, however, looking at this situation and this vehicle, I don't really think that this is going to be something that's worthy of getting a new cylinder head for. I think we might be better off just repairing what we have or at least making an attempt at the repair of this cylinder head rather than getting a whole new cylinder head in this instance. The plan is going to be to finish drilling this out, tap it out, and then when I install a stud in its place, I'm going to coat the threads with JB Weld and the hole with JB Weld before I put that in there, hoping that JB Weld will seal the hole. The other thing with JB Weld is I've got to let it cure overnight. So I'm going to let it sit after I get everything put back together, come back tomorrow morning, cross my fingers that when I start it up, everything's okay. That's the plan. Uh, I know I've done a lot of talking, but it's going to take me a while to get drilled through this and get everything tapped into that point. So I'll let you go now. We'll circle back after I've got that stuff done and we'll talk a little bit more. One more thing I want to cover before we uh, get into that repair, and that's this exhaust manifold here. Now, I called around to find out if this was a common problem, and apparently it's not. But looking at this, laying it on my table, which is now level, you can see that this uh, one over here on the far end, there's a bit of a gap. This is a 20 thousandths feeler gauge, and it just slips under there like it's nothing. It won't slip under these other two. I am concerned that if I put this back on, just as it is now, that this will create a little bit of spring tension on the new studs that I'm going to be installing and possibly the same thing might happen further down the road. Plan would be to try and grind these down perhaps. And this is also a, a concern of mine because you really need to grind these all flat and that's going to be difficult to do with hand tools. So that's something that I think also should be addressed uh, during the course of this repair. Drilling at this angle is not fun. It's cold here today too. And we're back. I finished drilling out the lower hole. I'm about to run the tap in. Uh, something that's real important when you're doing this work is to try to get as straight as possible into the hole. That's the reason why I went into the coolant jacket. Part of the reason was my drill bits. I'll be honest, they were a bit dull and they sort of slipped off of the fastener, which is a harder material than the aluminum that it goes into. Once I went into the softer material and started going in that direction, there was kind of no turning back. That being said, uh, I have my tap. I have it drilled out, uh, I believe, to the correct diameter. I'm going to tap it out. I'm going to try to insert this stud in here and just see where we're at. And then we got a whole other hole to deal with, and I'm hoping that one doesn't have the same issues uh, as the lower one did, because I don't know if... I don't know if I could take it. I might have to give up for good. I am putting a little bit of oil on the uh, tap before I put it in. Those of you who ask me, why is it red? Well, it's transmission fluid, which is just as good as motor oil. You can use motor oil. Don't freak out about it. Slow and steady wins the race here. Hopefully, we got down in there and did a good job of making some threads. I can check it out with my inspection mirror. All right, let's see how the stud runs in. I haven't cleaned anything out yet. I just want to see if it goes in the direction that I want it to go. Oh, there it is. Definitely at an off angle. I have to get this nut off of here and try putting the manifold on just to see how it goes in. All right, now I'm going to go for a test fit. My main concern is the angle of that stud. Uh, I've got a pretty 
wide hold here to work with and if I need to I can hog it out a little bit more uh, but I just want to find out if I need to do that so but because I will definitely have studs here and possibly up here when I go in to uh, do the install and I remember this being kind of tricky and not fun I guess the real test will come in if these other bolts go in if not like I said I'm gonna have to find a way to hog them out yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to widen that hole a little bit because I'm just a few millimeters off. We'll concern ourselves with that when we go and do the quote unquote machining on the rest of this to get this part to fit properly. All right, now that we know that it's going to fit relatively uh, well and we'll be able to, to modify the exhaust manifold holes to, to make it fit, I want to try to get this stud in here so that it's in there for as long as possible because I want the JB Weld to have time to cure. Uh, a couple of things that I'm concerned about is first, I'm going to have to make sure that there's no coolant inside this hole uh, or as little coolant as possible when I put the JV weld in because we want the JV weld to adhere to the metal. So I'm going to go in here with a little bit of compressed air after I remove the stud and try to get as much of that junk and coolant out of this hole as I can so that when I reinsert this, it uh, goes in clean and into, like I said, that JV weld. As we've used on several occasions during this repair so far, I'm going to bust out my torch. If I keep hitting that with compressed air, I'm just going to blow cooling out the radiator and everywhere else. It'll just pretty much stay inside the hole, but I'm looking to dry it out. Evaporation is a good way, so I'm just going to kiss it with a little bit of fire. Now I'd like to do a whole bunch, just enough to get the metal around the outside warm enough to evaporate whatever's inside that hole. That's the plan anyway. I'm gonna call that done. All right, moment of truth. It's either gonna work great or I'm gonna fail miserably on camera in front of all of you. How embarrassing. Wipe away the excess. Maybe a little bit on that one side. Fill up the top of that hole a little more. A lot happier with that. Now that we've got the lower hole there sorted, at least we, I think we do, uh, I'm going to start with the upper hole and it's really imperative that we try to get down in the center hopefully I don't suffer the same fate as I did on the last one but I use this uh, punch to do that and this will make sort of a scribe in the center and then you drill from there and then the the other trick is to try to get this to go in as straight as possible as it so happened on the lower hole that didn't happen that's why I ended up with a mess that I ended up with so you are uh, you're not in for a good day if you run into this just saying Take your time, be patient. I took a break. I, I had to go away for a bit, and that, that I think is a good idea. In fact, I've made a video on that in the past. I'll link to that in the description. I think I got that one right this time. This one looks actually very centered. I just felt it go through the back of the stud so there was a change in pitch of the uh, drill and everything as I went through so I know that I've actually gone through the stud now which is a good thing. Once we've got the first hole drilled we're going to move up to a larger drill bit size and uh, until we get large enough to, to tap the hole out. Now some of you might be asking hey Eric uh, why don't you try an easy out which I do have some. 
The reason I won't is because I've done this exact job before uh, many years ago and ended up breaking the easy out off inside of the stud and I had to send the whole thing off to a machine shop to get fixed. With all the trouble I've had up to this point, drilling and tapping is the way I'm going to proceed. Larger drill bit. And this should go a lot quicker now that we've already got a pilot hole made. Once again, keep the uh, drill pointed straight and perpendicular. I'm already through. You can see how much more quickly it goes once you've got that first hole drilled. Before I go further, let's get a look down in there, see what we're dealing with. After this, we should be able to run the tap in. This is the largest bit here. That should about do it. There we go. In case you're wondering, the tap size is eight by one, two, five. Well, if I'm honest, it's looking a little sloppy. I dare say that's fixed. And into a very long and winding road. There were two things we needed to address on the exhaust manifold itself. The first of which was we need to enlarge this hole so that uh, we've got a little bit of slop there so that we can uh, get that stud to work. But the other thing was is the fact that this wasn't all the way flush, uh, at least with all these three down here. Now, I'm really debating right now if I should pursue this or not. Because once I do, there's no going back. And I priced this out, and I think it's like a 150 bucks or something for another one of these, at least new. Uh, that's not saying what, what I could possibly find in salvage. That being the case, I think what I'll do is I'll just start with the center one. And I thought initially I would just go around the outside of this and draw with a marker so that I could tell where I was. But instead what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to grind this down until this surface is shiny. And then I'm going to recheck. And I'm going to start with just this middle one because if the middle one is the one that's high, then both of these other ones will come into line just by grinding the middle one down. I hope that makes sense. So it'll, if I'm going to draw it in, I'll draw it in on the ends rather than draw it in on the center. Plus it only leaves me grinding one instead of all three. Well, here goes nothing. Well, I'm not a machinist, but I hope that had an effect. Let's, let's check it. I think it had exactly the effect that I was looking for because I can no longer move this around. Okay, here's that same 20 thousandths feeler gauge I had from before, which won't go under anymore. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, it's not going down under anymore. Now I'm just going to elongate this hole and we should be all set. Here's our guy right here, this top one. I'm just going to use an angle die grinder. We've made the hole bigger. See, I've hogged it out. I also grabbed one of the nuts that's going to go in its place. Looks like it will be there and fasten, and I've got plenty of slop to work with. So let's go see if the rest of the holes line up. If they do, we have one more thing to do on this, which is remove that broken stud. I found a bolt about the same length that I'm going to replace it with just because I have it. Uh, those of you might be asking, hey Eric, what about replacing this gasket? Well, I asked my parts guy to send it to me and this is what I got. So we're going to work with this for now. And also, I'm just going to come out and say right now, I know there's another place on this exhaust system where this was leaking, but this right here was the most major leak. All right, let's give it a shot, see if it works.
Looks like I've got a bit farther to go. Still need more of a comfort zone there. So I'm gonna bring this down even closer to a more dangerous level, but we gotta do what we gotta do. We've made the hole bigger, much bigger actually. Uh, we still have just enough for our nut to catch on here. Enough to hold it in place, which is more than what it had before. As long as we're over here at the vise, why don't we get rid of this uh, stud that I broke when I removed it. Simple enough, I'm just gonna heat it. Thankfully, they were kind enough to put a 13 millimeter nut on it. All right, now, moment of truth. See if my uh, little massaging and fitting actually worked out for me. If we can get this top one in, we should be good. And we can. Well, it might need a little more yet. I'm gonna go do that and I'll be back. We've massaged it yet again. Now let's see if uh, we can get everything in there. Now I'm not really worried, too worried about this. It's still gonna hold uh, with the nut on here. I'm just looking for it to, to clamp on there. This other side will also be giving it some clamping force, but what actually locates it is the center one here. If that one goes in, we're all good. Now for the real test. Yep, it's going in. A little bit of help with a wrench. Make sure it goes in the rest of the way. I'm not gonna run it all the way down. I just wanna make sure that all the threads are caught. It's a little snug, but I think it's gonna be just fine. And that one's going in fine also. And these two are studs, so we don't have to worry about them. They're already in. I'd say we've got a repair. You know, I. Uh, tried fitting the gasket onto that stud that is in a slightly different location. Turns out I'm going to have to modify that hole in the gasket as well. So I've got my unibit. I'm just going to enlarge it slightly with. Looks like it'll be just enough. Eh, maybe I'll do these also. Before I install the manifold, I'm just going to clean up the ports a little bit with this uh, sandpaper slash crocus cloth. It's actually I don't know. It's, it's not very gritty sandpaper. It's just enough to basically clean up the surface before I put the uh, manifold and gasket back on. Could do the same to the manifold really quick. Obviously, I don't need to do the middle part. I think that's good. Like I said, just enough to knock that first layer of corrosion off. Going back together. I did end up making a lot of these holes a bit larger in order to accommodate uh, my repositioned stud, uh, but I'm just gonna put it on and go for it. I'm gonna get all these started before I start running anything down. I'm gonna tighten this middle one first so that I spread the clamping force and the load as evenly as possible. And I'm tightening the manifold to the engine and then the exhaust pipe to the manifold. First time that's been attached in a while. Now with this type of exhaust flange, you want to run them all down even and then start snugging them up or else you'll get that whole, this whole plate sort of off kilter. And if that happens, it's not gonna tighten down properly. I think we're in. I have to get a hammer and knock all that stuff down. You remember we had to massage things to get them to uh, fit in here. Well, I need to massage them back a little bit. Uh, so we'll just give it a little love tap. Maybe a bend with the pliers. But it'll go pretty much back where it was. I'll get the fasteners run in and then I'll tap it around a little bit more. And I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't run these all the way down just yet until I get this other shield in here. Yep, it does fit under there. Speaking of massaging, I gotta make that a little bit bigger because I bent it when I took it off. Mm. 
These aren't having any trouble going back in. I don't feel the least bit bad about doing that at all. It's now time to install our bracket on the front there. Now this is not fastened down to the cylinder head. This just fits on that peg there, which makes it somewhat difficult and cumbersome. Why they did this, I have no idea. Uh, but I'm just gonna go in and clean it out, uh, both top and bottom, to try to make it easy to uh, get on and off there. Remember, we had to use heat to remove it. Next, I'm gonna take that same sandpaper I used to clean stuff up with and just rip my sandpaper a little bit more. <laughs> Uh, to try to clean this a little. Here goes nothing. It did seem to help it. Now, there's two fasteners that go through with the AC compressor. Uh, they go in the lower part, and then there's one fastener that's a little higher up here. I'll show you that real quick. These two are for the AC compressor that go all the way through, but this one actually holds the lower bracket on. And given that the AC compressor bolts to this, before I snug this up, I'm going to get those bolts started too. These longer bolts were for the upper part of the AC compressor. And since I now have access from up here, uh, without the fans in the way, I'm going to try to put the lower fastener in the AC compressor from up here rather than crawling underneath. Now that the lower fastener is attached, let's get that upper one. We can do that quickly with the impact. Probably the easiest thing this whole job. AC compressor is attached. Right, knowing that you would never forgive me for uh, that broken clip on that connector for the AC compressor clutch. I'm gonna fix it up with a zip tie here. Main concern is keeping this out from uh, the serpentine belt, the area around there. Now that the AC compressor has been reattached, let's get the serpentine belt back on. Let's hope I did it right. I'm gonna reinstall the fans now. But before I do, I never saw the cooling fans run. It's real easy that they're here on the bench. I can just test them real quick, find out if they're working at all. That one is. That one is too. All right, now this thing was painful to get out. I'm hoping that it goes in a lot easier, uh, but we're just gonna see if we can slip this down in. We sort of have to go at an angle underneath the transmission lines and everything. And then these uh, little ears here fit into little slots on the side of the radiator. And then I have to bring the uh, transmission cooler lines up against this, which actually looks like it's all busted out anyway. I uh, hope that wasn't my fault. Here goes nothing. Oh yeah, and this needs to slip in between on the, the radiator. Uh, not to mention the wiring harnesses and everything else that's going to fight us along the way. We're just going to get ready for a party. Okay, there's very little room between this harness and this radiator neck right here. I'm thinking this harness belongs to the computer. And if we can just pick it up and move it out of the way, it just opened up a whole universe for us. That was two bolts that got me all that room. Sometimes just a little thing like that can open 
huge doors. Take two. I may go one step further. I may also remove that part of the air box. Okay, we've substantially increased the amount of room that we have to work here just by disconnecting a couple of things. Now, for the third time, <laughs> Seriously, if it had only come out that easy. Of course, had I had that other stuff removed, I might have had that advantage. The long one goes through the upper part of the radiator and the fan assembly. And the short one goes through up here and holds the upper radiator bracket into place. Another one of these on the other side. Now I just need to snug up those fasteners. Wow, that was a lot less painful than I thought it would be. I'm happy for that. This thing came off a little rough, a little silicone spray on the inside of this. Can help it slide onto there better. Like a glove. <laughs> Having like more trouble with this air filter, a serviceable item. Than I did getting the radiator fans in and out. Should be something he can replace, I would think. By some miracle that happens to be together correctly. And I say by some miracle because I don't really feel like I was an active participant. I think I was just letting the force guide me. Now, the computer. I suppose we can do this radiator hose now. So an electrical connector for our fans. These ignition wires. So it look like a car again. Put these two braces in. Reattach the uh, hood latch. I'm gonna try to line these up to where the bolt holes go into the same spot they were. And put our dipstick back in and these braces. I'm just going to try to slide them back into place, same as I got them out. Shorter ones go up front, they're short and long. I'm going to slide the other side in just to make it convenient and easy. I think that was like that to start with. It was sort of sticking up, but bust out the half inch, see what happens. That did it. Don't even. <laughs> that hole was all rusted up. It goes directly into the fender well. It was, I think, sticking up. In fact, I thought it was like maybe a shanked bolt when I took it out. So I actually corrected something. Uh, now, will that be difficult to get out? Probably. Probably need a half inch impact, but I'd rather have it fastened down than rattling around. I don't want to forget about this. Uh, maybe it's a fan relay? Not real sure, but it is a relay assembly. I want to put the engine mounts back on. In order to do that, I'm going to lower the vehicle down, remove my drip pan from underneath. So that way we did that rocking back and forth thing. This way we can rock it back and forth so it sits in where it's supposed to be. Ooh, look at all that metal. I'm going to release the parking brake so I can move it back and forth. And here we are, 
moment of truth. There's always these moments of truth that we end up with, isn't there? Where we're like, did I fix it? I hope I fixed it. Last ones. Would help if you had the right size ranch, Eric. I guess now we wait. Well, let's put the uh, overflow back in. This just clips onto that bar that we installed. Just pushes on. And then there's a little tab sticking out here that goes into that little hole there. One more plastic cover. That's that. We have now gone into, I guess, day three of this repair. The JB Weld has had time to set up overnight, although I will admit that uh, it's been pretty cold here in the shop. So I'm not sure how well that's set up, but I'm going to first start it up and listen for an exhaust leak. I, I believe there's still an exhaust leak further down in the system, but our main concern is the one in the engine for now, so that's what we'll focus on. I want to start it up, see uh, where we are as far as the exhaust leak goes, then I'm going to turn that off, fill up the cooling system, and bleed it out, and then see where, we're, well, I'll pressure test it, and then see where we're at. Okay, there's no more leak down in this area that I can feel. So that's definitely better. But there's still an exhaust leak, and I have a good idea where it is. I have a uh, pretty strong suspicion that this is the source of my exhaust leak. Okay, let's get this coolant topped off. Cracking that bleeder open makes filling the system easier. Goes in a lot faster now. Now that it's bubbling out, I can put the bleeder valve back in. Just to satisfy my own curiosity, I'm gonna pressure test this cooling system. There's a leak, I think, at my cap. Kinda wished I hadn't put this bar in place yet. Well, I guess we'll just do it the old fashioned way and get the uh, air blood out, put the radiator cap on and see if it leaks. Seems to have an issue sealing uh, right here around the radiator cap, but uh, we're mainly concerned with the leak that we created and hopefully fixed. If you start to see it bubbling up, like it just did right there, just stop for a second. Let it uh, calm down a little bit. The thermostat may open and you may see it suddenly disappear like it is right now. And that usually means the thermostat opened up. Well, okay, there's a lot of steam here. And I think the reason for that is, is the seam on the radiator over on this side, I believe is leaking. I checked up around that filler neck and I don't really see anything that's leaking there, but if you look a little farther down on that side where the uh, aluminum meets the uh, outer plastic tank, I think it's got a leak there. In fact, when it came in, it was low on coolant and I was a little concerned about that and now I know why. That being said, there does not seem to be any leaks down in here at all. I don't see anything leaking on the front of the engine, so there's nothing there. 
looks like the majority of our leak is happening over here. So bleeding out this cooling system completely is not exactly, it, it, well it's kind of a waste of my time. The engine also has a misfire, the check engine lights on it, and it still has that other exhaust leak. But we did manage to repair this exhaust leak, which was uh, what we're going to cover in this video. Well, that was certainly a challenge, uh, and then some. Now, admittedly, part of it was brought about by myself uh, because of my angles of drilling and dull drill bits, which in the end, uh, I ended up going to Harbor Freight and just buying packages of drill bits and new sharp drill bits. I used my drill doctor to start with. I was having some real issues with that. I don't know if it was because of how I was using the tool or what, but this is what solved it. The top stud removal went a lot better than the lower stud removal. Didn't drill in a coolant passage, just nothing like that. Drilled it dead center, got it out, tapped it out. We're good. Uh, but that bottom one, yes, drilled into the coolant passage. However, I believe it was a win in the fact that I do not see any leaks on the cylinder head in that area that uh, was affected. I think the JV Weld did the trick. Thank you very much. Uh, albeit we had to do a few modifications to get that repair to work, but the exhaust isn't leaking at the engine at the moment, so that's great. There's still some, some work to do, but for this video, we're closing this out and moving on. Hey, if you have automotive questions uh, that were not addressed in this video, I would ask that you head over to earthcarguide.com. There's a welcome video there to tell you about all of our amazing features uh, to help you with those automotive issues, should you have them. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. I post repair videos every Friday, so stop back and see me then. And I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. I will see you next time.